Hi everyone, it's uh, Johnny Seed here again, and today I'm going to do a video about album cover art and my favourite album cover art of the albums which I own. Um, so uh, it's not in any particular order, although I'm probably going to leave my favourite album cover art to the last one. Uh, I have some notes, so I shall be uh, reading from, from these. And uh, so yes, shall we start off with uh, probably the uh, out of all these, the newest record that I own, uh, as in the, le the latest addition to the um, to the collection, uh, and this is the new music, a compilation of sorts. Uh, well, not really a compilation. This is all conducted by the same um, person, Moderna, uh, the Rome Symphony. Now I like this. Uh, this caught my eye. This was in a charity shop, um, which I went to fairly recently. And it caught my eye because it had Stockhausen on it. Now, Stockhausen was somebody that was a big influence on Frank Zappa. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Frank Zappa. So I thought, oh, Stockhausen is not something you see very often in charity shops. So I'll grab that. But then I was uh, also looking at the cover and I thought, I really like that. It's kind of, uh, what do you call that? Uh, pop, not quite pop art, is it op art? Uh, Mid-60s. Sort of um, geometric graphic design. I couldn't see any, uh, <coughs> couldn't see any uh, credit on here as to who did it. It was just credited to the Decker Art Department. So, um, let's see if I can read it on here. Sleeve designed by the De Decker Publicity Art Department. So, whoever they were did a pretty good job. Um, so, yeah, new, new music. Stockhausen, Penderiki, Brown and Pousseur. Um, when I was in the shop, I also thought I'd found a Charles Ives record which, you know, bring me away, which I sort of grabbed, uh, but it turned out to be Burr Lives, so, you know, I didn't grab it. Um, okay, so, right, yeah, so, what's the first choice? Right, next up, Spyro Gyra, or Spyro Gyra, Morning Dance. Now, if you looked at this and you didn't know anything about the band, what would you think this sounded like? Folk? Prog? Proggy folk? 70s kind of... Prog folk, <laughs> uh, you couldn't be more wrong. This is a jazz fusion album. Uh, never has an album cover been so uh, misleading in that respect, I think. <laughs> uh, but isn't that fantastic? Let's look at the detail on it. Um, I remember this uh, my, This was one of my brother's albums. He used to have the, this on his wall. Uh, so uh, reading here, this is by, this is from 1979 and in the artist, the artist is David Hefferman. Um, who did quite a lot of other illustrations for some album covers. He did an Anthrax one, and he also did something on physical graffiti. Um, it, the, he's credited as being an artist on there. Now, another front cover of physical graffiti is a photograph of a uh, brownstone in New York, I think it was. Um, so, but I think he did the lettering inside the windows. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, isn't that, isn't that good? Right, <clears throat> Blue Oyster Cult, uh, another album which was on my brother's wall for years back in the 80s. Uh, this is an album from 1981, uh, which is uh, fantastic. I have this on display pretty much all the time in my room so I can look at it. <laughs> this is Fire of Unknown Origin and the cover artist is Greg Scott. Um, but yeah, so I love a lot of rather literal interpretation of the band's name. But this is that blue colour, I really love it. Fantastic. And there's the reverse. Okay, and talking of Frank Zappa, this is the Man From Utopia album with cover art by Tonino Libertore, uh, who was probably most famous for the character Rank Xerox, uh, which appeared in books of his own. He also appeared in the heavy metal uh, magazine, um, which that seems to crop up quite a lot in my videos. Um, so this is uh, his version of Mr. Frank himself. Now this is supposed to be a reference to some gigs in Italy. I know the one on the reverse <coughs> is a, a reference to a gig in Palermo where there was a riot. I think someone set off a uh, flare, um, as they want to do in Italy. And the front cover is I think a reference to another gig where there was lots of mosquitoes, hence the the fly sweater, but as, as well as being one of my favourite album covers, uh, this is probably one of my favourite Zappa albums. Um, it's got things on it like Cocaine Decisions, 
the dangerous kitchen and Tinker Walks and Mark, the radio is broken. Uh, they're just all on side one. Uh, big influences on me, the, the dangerous kitchen and, and the radio is broken. Um, big influence on my sort of musical creations as well over the years. Um, and it's also got The Man from Utopia Meets Mary Lou, uh, Stick Together, Sex and the Jazz Discharge Party Hats all on side two. So, excellent cover, excellent album. <coughs> so we're down to the last two. This is Black Sabbath, the first Black Sabbath album. Uh, and yes, we love this album cover. I just like the colour scheme. I like the fact that it's um, mysterious and spooky. It reminds me of Hammer Horror films from the 70s. Um, if you've ever seen any of those, they were kind of, I remember watching them, they were always on TV late at night. Uh, usually Saturday night they'd have a double bill. They'd start off with a, like a universal horror film, like a, a Frankenstein or a Wolfman or the Mummy, and then followed by a sort of 60s stroke 70s Hammer film, which was always very much more gory and which I wouldn't want to watch because I was like six years old or something. Um, but this front cover apparently was, um, the shot was taken at Maple Durham uh, Watermill on the Thames in Oxford. And what I didn't know until I researched this is that is the same watermill that appeared in the film The Eagle Has Landed, which is probably one of my favourite World War II war films uh, up there with Kelly's Heroes. So if you've seen that film, this is where the water wheel, where the German um, officer jumps in to save his little kid and he gets his, uh, his fake uniform ripped off, revealing underneath his German uniform, which of course, if you were a uh, big mistake, if you were going to go and pretend to be a spy in a, during a war, you wouldn't wear your own German uniform all the time. Why would you do that? Get his body off the wheel. Look at that uniform. <laughs> um, but never mind, anyway, back to the front cover. Uh, probably no one knows who this is, this, this woman here. Apparently she was just uh, uh, an actress which was just hired for the day and no one can remember who her name. Uh, apparently somebody approached Geezer Butler in the 80s and claimed to be this woman, but there was no way of proving it. So yeah, just uh, if ever an album did sum up what the music would sound like, I think this is probably going to be a good candidate for that. Uh, excellent. And this is just the, the NEMS version, it's not a Vertigo one. But uh, yeah, this was a charity shop find from a couple of years ago. I think this was a pound. So. Right. And number one. Uh, Led Zeppelin 3. <laughs> with the spinny disc cover. This one does move. I'm a bit reluctant to do much with me around because there's faint traces of the shrink wrap still on this. Uh, this is not our first issue though, but this is very, a very early uh, reissue. I bask in its glory. I think I love this. It's just so different from from anything else, especially anything else that Led Zeppelin had put out, and anything else in the seventies, really. I mean, um, if you look back a lot of rock and and heavy rock albums, they all seem to be very dark covered, and this is very bright, as you can see, and white and poppy, uh, pop arty. Uh, the cover was actually designed by someone called Zachron or Zacron, um, and uh, Jimmy Page apparently met him and really liked his work and commissioned him to do it. So, and it was, um, Jimmy Page apparently had some ideas about crop rotation charts, which is hence why the, the, the spinning wheel thing. So yes, my favourite all-time album cover of all time is Led Zeppelin 3. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much for watching.